There are some natural phenomena that are famously rare, like lightning striking the same place twice or a dormant volcano erupting unexpectedly. But there are some things that are so rare you'd only believe them if they were caught on camera, like waterfalls flowing upwards, eyes stretching like jelly, or clouds wearing rainbows like hats. Intrigued? Well, get ready, because we're about to take a look at some one in a billion moments in nature captured on camera. Waterfalls, as the name suggests, are steep falls where a river or body of water plunges down into a pool below. They're not exactly uncommon, with more than 7,800 documented waterfalls around the world. But incredibly, some of them refuse to adhere to the laws of gravity, such as this one in even Utah. Well, the water is flowing backwards instead of over the edge. It looks like some sort of magic, but actually, this small stream simply couldn't compete against the 60 mile per hour winds whipping through the area, which were so powerful they blew the water back up the way it came. Talk about turning the laws of nature on their head. And speaking of waterfalls, have a look at this phenomenon that occurred at Yosemite Valley, California back in 2019. This is the famous Yosemite Falls, a 5,403-foot waterfall that, when it catches the sunlight just right, produces one gigantic rainbow. Now, you may be thinking, I see rainbows like this all the time. But let me ask you, have you ever seen one at night? Well, back in June 2023, during a cloudless evening with a full moon, the moonlight was so bright that it was able to create rainbows, or as they're also known, Moonbows and Yosemite Valley's waterfall spray under the stars. Well, but how? Well, rainbows are formed when light is scattered by water droplets through a process called refraction. But it doesn't have to be sunlight, it can be any source of bright light, moonlight included. Whoa, starlight, moonlight, waterfalls, rainbows, and moonbows. If it weren't for the footage, I'd say this place was too magical to be real. Now, waterfalls like this are pretty stunning, but have you ever heard of a cloudfall? Not only is it a cloudfall, it's a reverse cloudfall, and from a distance, you might just mistake it for a gigantic rolling wave. This was luckily captured over the Bluff Knoll Peak in Australia's Stirling Range National Park. Visible falls like this develop during clear weather immediately following heavy rain or snow, which moistens the lower atmosphere. The clear skies allow the air to cool until this moist air is saturated, forming a sea of clouds. As more dense air builds up, it eventually spills over the mountain edge or is swept over by a gust of wind, making the cloud sea appear to climb up the mountain instead. No matter the direction, it's spellbinding either way. Now, we've all seen footage of wildfires raging out of control, engulfing everything in their path. But in this next case, which was filmed back in October 2019, it showed a fire that was localized to the middle of a tree. How is this even possible? Well, it appears that a bolt of lightning struck this particular tree located out in Texas. Now, trees are naturally great conductors of electricity because of their sap, so like nature's own little lightning rods, they can direct a vast amount of electricity from lightning strikes down into their roots and the surrounding earth. But the dry dead wood that makes up a tree's center provides great kindling for a fire. And when lightning strikes, well, a single bolt can reach anywhere between 50,000 and 70,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's at least five times hotter than the surface temperatures of the sun. So the dead wood at the tree's center was immolated with the living wet outer layers protecting the tree's exterior structure, resulting in this self-contained inferno. 
When it comes to all natural infernos, though, nothing compares to volcanic eruptions. This is where molten hot liquid rock rises up through the Earth's crust until a buildup of pressure bursts through the surface, causing a deadly eruption of hot lava, ash, and gases. But this is nothing special. In fact, some 50 volcanoes all over the world are in various stages of eruptions as we speak right now. However, some eruptions are more electrifying than others, like this one that occurred at Indonesia's Krakatoa volcano back in 2018. Holy cow, that's a lightning storm inside a volcanic ash plume. How does that even work? Well, volcanic lightning arises from colliding fragmenting particles of volcanic ash and sometimes ice, which generates static electricity within the volcanic plume, and in turn, lightning. Because some of these plumes can reach as high as 34 miles into the atmosphere, the taller the plume, the more particles there are, giving it a greater chance of producing lightning. But seeing as plumes that tall are theoretical, with most plumes reaching a top height of 28 miles, volcanic lightning is still a super rare occurrence. Somehow, even knowing storms like this are rare doesn't make me any less scared of them. Between watching a tree on fire from the inside out and a volcanic plume with its own lightning storm inside, which all natural occurrences do you think are cooler? For the tree, hit the like button. And for the plume, hit subscribe. All done? Great. What's up next? Now, despite what you may believe, volcanic eruptions don't always involve lava or ash. In fact, they can be downright wet. But the eruptions are just as powerful and just as deadly when they're made of mud. Hang on, mud? Can mud be deadly? It sure can. This particular mud volcano is located in Trinidad and is known terrifyingly as the Devil's Woodyard. It first blew its top all the way back in 1852 and is still active to this day. The sheer force of the explosion knocked the entire village off its feet and cut down the trees. Similar low-key eruptions have occurred in the following years, but in 2018, it became violently active again, spilling out molten hot mud some 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit, over 150 feet in every direction from the center. It looks unbelievable from above, but what even causes the mud to erupt on this scale? The eruptions are caused by water heating up and blending with minerals deep below the surface of the earth until the pressure rises higher and higher and the muddy mix is ejected out everywhere. Muddy hell? No wonder they call it the Devil's Woodyard. That mud's probably came from Satan himself. Well, if that last clip didn't prove to you that the earth is alive, just take a look at this. The ground is breathing? That can't be. What's actually happening? Is the forest enchanted? Was this actually filmed on the face of some mossy tree-laden slumbering giant? Well, this particular forest in Quebec, Canada is being battered by strong gusts of wind making the trees sway back and forth. Because the ground is covered in light moss, the roots of the trees are also moving. These root foundations are attached to small young trees, not great big oaks, making them even more unstable. So when the wind comes in, the shallow roots are causing the floor to swell up and down as the trees move. I've never seen anything like that before, have you? Let me know down in the comments. While most forests appear full of life, most deserts appear, well, deserted. But if you trek on down to the Atacama Desert spanning over Chile and verging into Argentina, Bolivia, and Peru, you might find something that makes the place feel magically alive. Wait, sorry, that must be the wrong clip. That looks like a field of icicles. Let me try that again.
No, this, this is the correct clip, huh? These icy spikes are called penitentes and range in length from a few centimeters to over 16 feet tall. These unique formations are only found in mountainous desert and areas over 13,000 feet above sea level. Being so elevated is what causes them to stay frozen, in fact. At night, without the warmth of the sun, the temperature here plummets, reaching lows of a freezing 28 degrees Fahrenheit during the winter months. Combine that with moisture in the atmosphere, and these parts of the desert can experience snowfall. But when indents in the snow absorb sunlight and the high solar radiation heats the snow in a dry atmosphere, the snow can forego transitioning into a liquid state and vaporizes straight into steam, a process called sublimation. When this happens, the spaces between the snow starts to thin and hollow out, leaving individual spikes of compacted ice still standing. Man, who knew a natural phenomenon could be so cool? Continuing this icy theme, let's turn our focus away from the desert and over to Maine, where something weird happens in the water. It doesn't feel natural seeing a perfectly circular sheet of ice endlessly rotating in the exact same spot, and yet this was all down to a perfect set of ice-cold coincidences. These are ice circles. They can range from less than a foot in diameter to upwards of 300 feet. Their apparent never-ending movement is caused by flowing water, creating a force called rotational shear. See how this one spins? In the beginning, the force of the flowing water breaks off a chunk of ice and then, in the current, twists it around. As the disc rotates, it grinds against all the surrounding ice. When it does this, it becomes a smaller, smooth circle. Who knew something so simple could be so mesmerizing? Now in Oregon, USA, a woman walked into her garden and found her pool filled with ice. Considering parts of Oregon can get as cold as negative 54 degrees Fahrenheit, that seems pretty normal, right? Only when she touched it, it didn't behave or feel like ice at all. In fact, it stretched when she pulled her hand through it. Okay, aside from looking weirdly satisfying, what's going on here? Well, the surface tension of the water is a force which causes liquid to behave like elastic, and so the temperature had to be just right for this to happen. As ice freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it must have been just high enough to act upon the water's surface so that it remained in the process of freezing. Therefore, it's not quite hard ice yet. It's actually in a state of near freezing and oddly satisfying. But water gets even weirder over in this lake in the Dominica. Known aptly as the Boiling Lake, the temperature of the water here makes this one of the hottest lakes in the world. Have you seen the water? The water, yeah. Have you seen a lot of oh, no. No, 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 no. Only the little puddle. All right, where? Here. Uh, no, I think I'm not a puddle. No, 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 it's not puddle. Now we need some, like, big dinosaur. The explanation as to how this is possible lies well beneath the surface. The boiling lake is actually a flooded fumarole, which is a vent or opening where volcanic gases and vapors are emitted. The molten lava below heats up the groundwater, turning it into steam and forcing it to rise up to the surface where it condenses into hot water. How hot though? Well, the water ranges from 180 to nearly 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's just at the edges. Scientists studying the phenomena haven't been able to measure the temperature of the water in the center because it's too hot to access. It's kind of like a kettle, if that kettle was a 200-foot-long hole in the ground. In TV and film, a character might have a personal rain cloud hanging over their head to show that they're feeling blue. These aren't real, though. We all know rain doesn't work like that, right? Right? Wrong. This real-life phenomenon is known as ultra-localized rainfall, where a small shaft of precipitation falls in a very specific area. This event is incredibly rare because rain clouds generally stretch dozens to hundreds of miles, so the temperature fluctuations required to induce rainfall tend to affect the entire cloud rather than just one small part of it. But it can happen, like it did here in an Indonesian parking lot back in 2021. Saudara-saudara, ini hujan di mobil ini doang ini lihat nih, yang lain kagak nih. Nih, yang lain gak ada yang hujan. Ini di mobil ini doang nih. Tuh. Masya Allah. Masya Allah. Ini di sini doang nih hujan nih. Ini di sini doang hujan. Nih. 
Does that make this car a Range Rover? <laughs> there's nothing more relaxing than dipping your toes in the waves, but there's something about these waves that's a little eerie. Do you see it? These might be small, but those are square waves. This occurrence is called a cross sea, where storm systems with high winds blowing in two different directions simultaneously generate waves that occur at angles to each other, and when they collide, they create these strange aquatic boxes. While they look pretty when they're close to shore, they can be dangerous when they occur further out to sea. Here, the waves can be stronger and higher, and the crossing of the swells can create powerful rip currents that can easily overpower surfers and ships. So if you see a set of square waves heading your way, I'd get out of the water if I were you. Of all Mother Nature's creations, the cactus has to be one of the craziest. This famously spiny plant grows in a variety of shapes and sizes. The smallest breed, called Blossfeldia, is so tiny, its maximum diameter is barely bigger than a penny. The saguaro cactus, on the other hand, is the largest in the world, with the biggest of them all reaching a staggering 78 feet tall. That's taller than a standard seven-story building, but when you open a cactus up, it gets even more amazing. You might have heard that 90% of a cactus is made up of water, but what's that other 10%? While well, the spongy green flesh of the cactus is kept moist thanks to the waxy outer coat reducing water loss, but at the center you can see a ring of woody ribs that give the saguaro cactus its structural stability, allowing it to grow as tall as it does. And boy does it need it. Because at their biggest, the water stored in these things can mean a fully hydrated cactus can weigh upwards of 4,800 pounds. So if you see one of these things about to fall, I'd move over. Well over. During the day, the top of the Kawaijin volcano in Java, Indonesia looks like any other volcano crater. But at night, something otherworldly happens. At the mountain's summit, which reaches over 9,000 feet high, the peak is crowned with wreaths of bright blue and purple flames. Although it looks like blue lava is erupting from the peak, what's really going on is even more incredible. This volcano naturally produces some of the highest levels of sulfur gas in the world. As these escape from cracks and vents in the volcano sides, they come into contact with oxygen in the atmosphere and are set alight by the molten hot lava. Unlike most fuels, sulfur burns blue and at a low temperature, creating these incredible sights. Now, dramatic color changes aren't just a feature of Kawaijin. The United States Grand Prismatic Spring of Yellowstone National Park, located in the Midway Geyser Basin, is the third largest natural hot spring in the entire world, measuring in at 370 feet in diameter. That makes it more than twice the length of an Olympic swimming pool, and at least four times more colorful. The bedrock here is home to huge concentric circles of vibrant blues, greens, yellows, and oranges, which is a completely unique sight to behold. But these colors haven't been painted on. They're down to the geothermically heated water that erupts from the center of the spring, which can reach a near boiling 189 degrees Fahrenheit. When this water spreads out, it cools, allowing different rings of bacteria that thrive at temperatures to develop in areas ranging from 131 to 189 degrees Fahrenheit. Oof! Spicy circles. Another of nature's incredibly cool lakes can be found on Isle Malki Island in Palau. It's around 12,000 years old, making it a rare remnant of the last ice age. But what's really special about it, though, is what's inside it. Millions of golden jellyfish have made the lake their home, and they're completely unique, because this is the only place on Earth where you can find this particular species. But how did they get here? Well, sometime during the last ice age, as glaciers melted and sea levels rose, the Miocene Reef this place was once part of was flooded, and what became Jellyfish Lake was cut off from the rest of the world. Without any natural predators, the jellyfish multiplied in their millions over generations. A genetic mutation that occurred several thousand years back also means that all the jellyfish are completely stingless, so tourists can snorkel with them without fear of being stung. Man, all that footage looks like something out of a dream. A little further afield, though, there's an underwater phenomenon that looks more like something out of my worst nightmare. Yeah, that's a giant hole under the ocean. Technically, it's a giant sinkhole off the coast of Belize, also known as the Great Blue Hole. Some 15,000 years ago, sea levels began to rise and the hole was submerged and the world's most unsettling nightmare pool was born. 
It's the largest sea hole in the world at more than 1,000 feet across and 400 feet deep. But how do we know it wasn't formed underground? Well, stalactites, which are icicle-shaped formations formed from mineral deposits from dripping water, prove that it was all once above ground. Somehow, that doesn't make this perfectly circular void in the ocean any less unnerving. <gasps> Look there, up in the sky. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a cloud? No, it's, it's... It's the most beautiful thing i ever seen. Hold up, is that a cloud with a rainbow halo? Almost. This is what's called a scarf cloud, or pileus cloud. These occur at very high altitudes where it's cold enough for ice crystals to form. The sun has to strike the ice crystals inside the cloud at the perfect angle and also hang higher in the sky on that particular day. In winter, for example, the sun angle is too low to react with the ice crystals, but in summer, it's much more likely. The ice refracts inside the crystals and this colorful halo effect occurs. It's rare that all conditions are just right to produce this spectacle, and even rare that someone has a camera on hand ready to record it, so count yourselves lucky to get to see it at all. But you know what's cooler than seeing a Peleus rainbow cloud? Seeing eight rainbows at once. Yeah, eight. Man, that's a crazy amount. The leprechauns must be working overtime today. Now, double rainbows are things I've witnessed firsthand more than once, along with plenty of other people, I'm sure. This happens when sunlight is reflected twice within a raindrop with the violet light that reaches the observer's eye coming from the higher raindrops and the red light from lower raindrops. But eight rainbows all apparently appearing in different orientations in one spot? Yeah, I smell a Photoshop job here. Let me do a little reverse imaging searching here, and hey, what do you know? Here's the original image showing, okay, that's still four rainbows. This is still a very rare event because for four to form, that means two different light sources had their light reflected by water droplets, such as from the sun and from the reflection off a lake. And someone had their camera ready to take a picture too. What a colorful coincidence. Imagine taking a nice long stroll down the beach. Ah, so relaxing. The waves lapping the shore, the sand glowing neon blue, palm trees sway, wait, what? And it's not just the sand, the water is glowing blue too. That's pretty good. Yep. Have we stepped onto the set of the next Avatar film? Nope, this is all real. These beaches owe their unique blue lighting to plankton, specifically a phytoplankton called Lingolidinium polyadrum. It produces light using a chemical called luciferin, which is activated as a stress response to sudden movement, mainly to defend against predators and attract mates. So, what you're really looking at is algae washed up on the shore and floating in the sea, producing this bright blue glow when you touch it. Anyone else tempted to get in the water and splash around pretending you're magic and that you're a wizard casting spells? No? <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, <coughs> me neither. <laughs> oh, yeah. Moving away from the sea and looking over a series of stark plains near Davarza in Turkmenistan, nothing seems out of the ordinary. Until you spot what appears to be the literal entrance to hell. This is called the Darvaza Gas Crater, also aptly referred to as the Gates of Hell. But for all the cool nicknames, this 230 feet wide, 98 feet deep cavern is a complete and utter mystery. No one knows exactly how the crater formed or how it caught on fire. We don't even know how long it's actually been burning for. It could be years. It could be decades. Wait, decades? How does it even have enough fuel to have been burning for decades? That's because the cavern is situated in a natural gas field. These areas of gas leach from pockets of natural gas underground, which are usually extracted to sell commercially. But how did this section collapse into itself and become a crater? Nobody really knows. Some theories speculate it was caused by a drilling accident back in the 1970s. Others claim it was set alight to prevent a buildup of toxic gases, and the steady stream of gases kept the entire crater burning ever since. Whatever its cause, this is one natural phenomena I'm happy to view through a screen instead of visiting myself. I don't want to meet the devil just yet. Well, which of these moments do you wish you could witness with your own eyes? Or is there something you've seen in person that I didn't mention here? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.